Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and this is the Giant Mouse Ace Grand, and there's a lot to get into, so we're going to just jump right into it. Now, I've been very impressed with this knife. I have been liking it quite a bit. I have modified it as well. Now, we're going to get into that here in a second. Elmac Steel, my car to scales with steel liners and a steel wire clip. Now, carrying this thing has been awesome. In and out of the pocket, it's really nice. It carries extremely well for a bigger knife because this is not a small knife. It's not really heavy or anything, but it's also not light. It's, you know... It's a large knife. So for a large knife, it carries extremely well. Now, in and out of the pocket, spring clips or, you know, these type of clips, they, they, they're they known for working really good. Now, the one downfall can be in the hand. However, this knife is super comfortable in the hand. I like this knife in the hand, even after modifying it, which we'll get into all that. But it's so comfortable in the hand, it makes up for because okay so it has really good geometry for a hard use knife it's not like this thing is super thick behind the edge or anything like that but the blade is a, a slightly on the robust side of what i consider robust now what other people might consider robust might be way way thicker than this because there are some ridiculously thick knives out there this is not that this is a great slicer great cutter great everything now when you mix it with the ergos now we're talking because you have the the ability and the pressure and the comfort to really use this thing hard so it just maximizes the geometry it has cutting with this thing is fantastic i love using this knife it slices like a dream mine's about 20 thousandths behind the edge but i did lay my edge angle back so after sharpening it it is about 20 thousandths behind the edge and man the geometry being such a tall flat grind it really helps you know spread material when you're passing through and then coupled with the incredible ergos this thing has the pressure distributes across your palm really nicely and evenly so and you can get up really nice and tight close up to the edge for really strong push cuts and then being back in a slicing position or slicing grip that type of grip you have you have jimping on the spine that also helps you lock in but you just have maximum amount of leverage coupled with good geometry for this size knife now utility cuts utility cuts are also really good it has a nice robust tip while also being nice and acute so and then the downward facing tip um, i guess you would call this a drop point blade but it has reinforced strength from the the spine thickness of the blade so you have a nice strong durable tip while also being really good at utility cuts now it doesn't it's you know not going to be like a uh, worn cliff or some sheep's foot but for a drop point blade with as big of a belly as it has it is perfectly fine you get lots of leverage and again the grip being so comfortable you have this little spot back there to really you know on the back of the handle where you can really push put pressure down into something and get a lot of strength pulling back through your cuts so the utility cuts are great now the action the action's really good but it's hard for me to get into the action before i get into my mods however before i ever modified it so for people that have it or are going to get it and not modify it the action's good it's nice crisp detent it's not a really strong detent but it's not a weak detent it is very well tuned now it is on bearings, on steel bearings, and we're going to talk all about that when we talk about the mods, but the bearings are very smooth. It's not fall shut action. It's not even really that, I mean, it's drop shutty. It's shake shutty. How about that? Shake shutty action. Um, very easy to slow roll out. The hole is not chamfered, so it is sharp around the edges. So when you do slow roll, you can actually feel that edge spinning around your finger, which not in a bad way, just in a way where you have good grip. Reverse flicking action, great positioning for the hole. It lands right in a perfect place for me. So if I have it in my palm, 
it's very easy to deploy uh, with the reverse flick. You can use the skin of your finger because the detent's really not that strong, or you can use your nail. Either one works just fine. Like I said, the detent isn't really strong, but it's great for this type of deployment. It wouldn't be good for a flipper, but it works great for a hole or thumb stud action. So deployment is fantastic. Now, my one complaint was the access to the liner. I couldn't, it just sucked. Um, it was very tight, hard to get to, and it just, you could do it, and it wasn't like it was an unbearable thing, something that I could never overlook, because I easily could have. I could have definitely overlooked it. And it closed just fine. However, I I got a pet peeve with tight, uh, hard-to-get-to liners. I don't like that. I like having fast, quick access to my liner. So that's why I wound up doing the mod. But before that, you could still get to it. And the drop is pretty smooth. The detent is nice and early um, for where, because it's not a flipper. So right here is what's going to hit your finger like that right there. So it's well past the detent when it hits your finger, which is nice even before I modified it. So that is a good thing. Now the liner is... It does have some jimping on it, and it is pretty sharp. So depending on how strong the lock bar is, mine has good strength. But it's also not sharp to where, like, the Ace Biblio is pretty aggressive. This has the same type of jimping, but for some reason, it's not as bad to me. Now, uh, the drop on it, like I said, is more of a shake shut type of action, but it is on steel bearings. The one way we might be able to improve that is by adding some Gillian bearings, which I might do in the future. Um, I do have to order more because right now the, the, the size for this is being used and tested, but it is still incredibly smooth on the drop, even with the steel bearings. Okay, now... Let's talk a little bit about this modification and then we'll get into the sharpening and testing of LMAX. Now, I will say, I forgot to say that this does have a titanium backspacer that is uh, a good size. It also adds good weight to this knife. Now, modifying this, I did want to increase obviously the finger space. So I marked it out, marked it out exactly where I wanted the you know, the chamfering or the, the access to go. I took my knife apart and you'll notice when I take it apart, you'll notice that the bearings are also riding on a washer. So the washer has, um, a track around it for the bearings to roll on very similar to what Tucson does. So that's a nice uh, thing to have. I would rather have uh ceramic bearings but nope this one has steel bearings and they actually had the bearings with the open face to the blade which isn't an issue with this because it actually has a um a track cut into the blade and into the liners so but i did turn them around when i put it back together and put the closed face of the bearings back in now after I marked it all out and knew exactly where I wanted it, I got my bit for my Dremel and the the sandpaper bit or the sandpaper um, casing that goes over that bit. It's like a little uh, tube of sandpaper and it goes on the bit. You have to um, adjust the Phillips head on that bit to, to, to basically expand to hold the sandpaper in place. Then I started working on it. And, you know, sandpapered it back. I really only needed that bit. Um, I could have used other bits to soften it up afterwards, but it worked just fine. And after I got it back to where I wanted, now the one problem, I, you could consider this a problem or not, I don't care, but this right here, you see how this goes around the liner, right? It goes around the liner. The liners are inset. Well, when you cut it back, you're going to expose the face of that liner because this is thin right here. So chamfering it back, I had to get rid of that because if I would have left a little bit of this covering it, it would have been way too thin and eventually probably would have broke 
from me pushing on it. So I just cut it all the way back. Then I put it back together and I noticed that the liner was still there or was exposed quite a bit. So I had, I took it back apart, which I was considering that was going to be a thing anyways. Now, after putting it back together, I marked out the steel where that was uh, being exposed on the, you know, from the liners and I cut that back as well. Now I used a, um, a, a carbide cutting bit, which is for cutting hardened steel. Now this carbide cutting bit, all these things, I'm gonna link down in the description for you guys, just so you guys know. Now the carbide cutting bit, um, when you use it, just know there are going to be a lot of little metal splinters. You, you should use uh, gloves. You should absolutely have eye gear on, safety glasses, something like that. Uh, now, I did not put gloves on because I'm stubborn, but if you choose not to wear gloves, like me being dumb, make sure you rinse. You do not try to just wipe the stuff off. Those metal little uh, needle-like... Um, dust the dust from cutting the steel will get into your skin like basically basically like itching powder so run your hands under hot water for about 15 minutes and then go to straight cold freezing water for about five minutes that should take care of it but do not think you're just going to wipe that stuff off that's not how that works um but it, it, it is like itching powder so be careful and you want to make sure you clean your mess up really good because you do not want that stuff in your pivot now after doing that putting it all back together um i did uh you know you can see how the liner is cut back now and the access is really good some people might not like how that liner is exposed i personally don't care but that is something you do have to consider if you are going to do this if you just chamfer this back a little bit you might be able to get away with not exposing the liner but in that case it is going to be very fragile because it's going to be very thin right there so i just got rid of it completely and i am so much happier with it Perfect access. Look at all that access. Lots of access to the liner. Very easy to disengage. I don't even have to think about it. It's so much better. I'm loving it. And now in the closed position, you can see how it looks with that hole. I don't think it looks bad. I think it looks just fine. Um, it actually kind of reminds me of this knife right here. Now you see how the color matches right there. This eventually will start darkening and everything. And I can add some oils to it if I want to, to darken it up, um, which I probably will. But for right now, it is just fine. And you know, even just getting it wet, like you can see it's, uh, you know, how it darkens up, but with a little bit of oil and time and handling, it will get really, it'll get dark. Now holding it in my hand, it is very comfortable still. My hand just goes right over the top of it. This does not bother me one bit. Now you see how they did leave this a little proud. I'm actually happy for that. And their whole point of leaving it a little proud so you could get from the front like this, so you wouldn't have to need access right here. But in my opinion, it still needed access. But my finger going around it, it's still very comfortable to me. I don't mind it one bit. Um, there's actually nothing to mind because it's very, very comfortable still. So even if I do the push cut where it's my middle finger right there, still very, very good. I am very happy with this modification. And yeah, it just ups the game. And when I unlock it, it's even better because now before I would have to go from the front right here and let it hit right there. Now I can actually let it drop a little bit farther. Either one wasn't a problem. It still got past the detent just fine, but it's even better, even better. So now let's get into the steel and sharpening. Now I did not record sharpening this thing, but I did lay back the edge to 17 degrees per side. The edge came out very, very sharp. Now I, Took it to a high polish and it held the 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 bite from the edge very very nicely now what i've read from lmax and let me just say i've been very impressed with lmax so i've had great experiences with it um especially now is edge retention is held up really good it sharpens really good holds a nice edge 
relatively easy to sharpen feels great on the stones um now what i've read is that it's very similar to m390 now the one thing that makes it a little bit better and this is just what i've read um i don't heat treat knives is that it's a little bit it's easier for them to heat treat because m390 can be very finicky especially in production heat treating processes but lmax seems to be easier to heat treat and you can heat treat it to a high hrc like m390 now m390 um, on the Catra test does get better edge retention uh, by like 10% more, something like that. Either way, what I'm trying to say is that M390 does beat it in edge retention. Now, I'm curious if that's across the board. Like if I took 10 knives in LMAX versus 10 M390 knives of production knives, not, not uh, custom heat treats, I would argue and probably bet that LMAX would outperform M390 uh, majority of the time or at least half the time because the heat if the heat treatment is easier to get then it's probably easier to get consistent and with m390 it can be a little wishy-washy on the edge retention so and edge retention isn't the the only thing you also have great corrosion resistance it's very stainless and it is a powdered steel that's another thing so it's very fine grained even though it has a massive amount of carbides in it to give it its edge retention it's also a powdered steel so it's very fine grained with lots of carbides which also leads to it getting an incredibly sharp edge um now the fine grained um you know steel in many cases or sometimes is the opposite way but in this case it's it's really really good um with the sharpening and the edge and it having bite at the edge even at high grit but the the toughness the toughness and wear resistance that's all very similar to to m390 as well so it's basically extremely close to being very similar to m390 um, aside for it's just slightly less edge retention on perfect cases, but I, like I said, you know, I think that, that that number it's it's very you know negligible or whatever you know. Anyways, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed with Almax. I'm liking it quite a bit now. Maintaining it. I've been maintaining it, or let me just say this. It's been holding up very, very well. It's edge retention has been incredible. I have a couple little spots right up in here that need a little bit of tuning. And now if I wanted to micro bevel this, I would use a ceramic rod, um, like on the work sharp field sharpener, um, that I link in the description, every, every video. Now that would be an easy way to to keep up with the edge which i did before i sharpened it uh, i kept up with it a bunch of times and tried to keep the edge going as long as possible before i ever sharpened it so the factory edge eh, it wasn't the best but it did last quite a bit and i tried to get the most life out of it as possible but after sharpening it now if i'm going to hone it i'm going to probably use one of my veneve stones the same stone i used to finish this on because i did sharpen this on my veneve dragon series diamond stones now i would probably just hone it on that or a spider coast ceramic stone the ultra fine or maybe one of my lansky sapphire stones uh because they're flat and this edge bevel is nice and flat and that's if i don't want to micro bevel it because then i'll lay it down on the exact same angle i sharpened it at and just hone it back now if i want to do it really quick and just do a couple passes on each side yes i'll just use a rod and put a tiny tiny micro bevel on it not a big deal um it'll also make the edge slightly more tougher because when you do add a little micro bevel when you lay back your angle and add a little micro bevel at the tip it can make it tougher now all in all some bad things so some bad things was the the liner we already got to that i obviously modified it next thing is that they use little t6s i don't they have t8 down here and then t8 up here same thing with the clip t8 t8 why did they put t6s here i will never know um it's dumb 
It's so dumb. And it is titanium hardware, by the way. So you got to be careful with titanium hardware. It can be soft. In this case, it's very, it's nice hard. It's definitely hardened titanium. So that's a thumbs up for that. I'm always happy to see that because a lot of times titanium hardware is not hardened. So you got to be careful with titanium hardware. In this case, it was just fine, but I'd rather just see T8s. Another thing, I do wish it had ceramic bearings instead of steel bearings. Now, I'll post a picture of the size of the ceramic bearings if you guys want to order some for yours from Gillian Knives. I did match the size up so the you know you can order new bearings from you know Gillian Knives but the the bearings that do come on it are steel bearings. Steel caged bearings with a steel cage. Yeah, I'd rather have ceramic you know, those can, it's possible for those to rust. They're not as smooth. Um, the self-lubricating factors uh, of ceramic are just better. They're slicker. There's just a lot of benefits to having ceramic bearing, so ceramic caged bearings um, in a brass cage instead of steel bearings inside of a steel cage. But that being said, it's still very smooth. Um, and yeah, but yeah, I'd still rather have the ceramic and I'm sure it'll be even smoother if I put my ceramic bearings in here, but right now they're in another knife. The sharpening choil is really good. They did leave a lot to sharpen. I'm very, very happy with that. Thank you, giant mouse for that. Um, there's not much bad here, guys. I'm sorry. The, the mic hard, I can only come up with better and more good things. <laughs> the only bad thing was this damn liner and the T6s. Other than that, this thing is phenomenal. Um, the mic hard is extremely good quality. You can see the fibers in it really good. It does have a texture to it. And it is a little harder than a lot of mic hard Now, if you look at this mic hard on the Kaiser Roach, this is a softer micarta. You can hear the difference in the scratching. So this is very, very soft. This is more hard. So um, not a big deal. It's really good quality. I'm very happy with it. It's very similar to the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio in a way, but a different, little different because this one has the fibers running um, kind of crisscrossed. The giant mouse was more uh, up and down, but the feeling of it, how hard it is and how solid it is and whatever resin they're using is very similar, but I like it. I like it a lot. I really do. I think it looks really good. I think it ages really good. It's very comfortable in the hand. Mine has dark, dark started darkening up quite a bit, but I've washed it. So it kind of came back. You can see under the clip how it's a little lighter right there. Now it was a lot darker before I started cleaning it but all in all man fantastic knife i'm sorry this review is so long i love you guys thank you guys for watching peace